I wanted to do um, a small video um, talking about the application of negative contrast on signalised crossings. Now, different people treat these in different ways, um, so I'm talking about the way I tend to do it. I'm not saying it's right, it is um, the way I tend to do it. So, um, this is um, an actual project I'm, I'm, um, I'm working on and um, the existing lighting is all um, 135 watt socks and as part of that um, process the council have asked it to be converted to LEDs and um, we're going to look at the actual crossing itself so one of the um, the, the ideas behind or the methodology behind um, longitudinal uniformity uh, behind um, negative contrast is to get good longitudinal uniformity behind the actual crossing itself so as the person approaching the crossing here will see the um, the, the the person or object on the crossing um, again as a dark object against a bright background so having um, a single-sided arrangement behind the crossing helps significantly in um, in achieving that um, so in, in doing that, what what we've actually uh, what I've actually done is I've looked at um, reducing the number of poles that are within the uh, within the calculation, and then upgrading the lens setting to um, to include a um, an LED lantern. Now, um, the uh, this particular project there's there's a couple of ways we can go set this up. Um, there's also um, a bus stop here as well, so uh, perhaps I was a bit um, bit over keen there deleting columns but um, anyway the purpose I'm, I want to show you is the negative contrast part so what I'm um, what I've done is I've previously already calculated a, a project using a single-sided arrangement for a three-lane carriageway in the in the roadway program and that's come up with a um, a solution um, using the R5 lens and um, so each of these would be um, could be changed to a um, to a luma. Um, what I what I could also do is um, is to use the uh, grouping facilities, set up a user defined group um, for all of those poles, and um, change those from a uh, a type F, which is my 135 watt socks, to the type B, which is my um, my Luma lantern that, that, that fits the criteria of, of what we're lighting the road to, which is actually uh, M3. So the road is lit to M3, but obviously in the outdoor program we're looking at um, illuminance. Now, from the calculation perspective, um, you can see that the without looking at specific grids for the um, for the calculation area, that you have a high level of illuminance um, immediately behind the crossing, both here and here. Um, so, from that perspective, um, that tends to um, is all that's necessary. Um, what I could do is I could um, put two specific grids um, or more um, around the actual crossing itself um, to um, to demonstrate that um, even more. So um, I'm just going to go into the editing tools. And um, we're going to uh, just rotate that around. Uh, we'll rotate it about the center. And then I'm just going to resize that. Something like that. So what I'm now looking at is the area that's immediately behind the crossing. Um, and let's go and look up, up to the first column. So what I can then do is to is to duplicate that and then put um, one in front of the same distance. So I'm going to duplicate that again and then put um, one in front there which I'm just going to make a bit wider because it's two lanes on the approach there and, and one lane on there and then duplicate that again and then um, now obviously you can go through and um, and add um, colouring to this so the uh, let's use red for that one and for grid 6 let's use uh, blue and then for grid 5 uh, let's use a diff slightly different blue let's go with that one 
and for grid 4 let's use magenta so um, what I can now see um, and if I go into um, is I can do a, a calculation which demonstrates that the light level on grid 4 let's just go look at what that actually is so uh, it'd help if I had some masking okay let's just change that to masking layer 2 yeah that helps Five. let's change that to masking layer 2 as well there. let's change that to um, masking layer 2 and grid 7 do the same um, what I haven't done which I really should um, is to um, is to include um, set all the grid points up and so and so on. They're, they're set to about half meter grid by the looks of it, um, which is is probably ticking the boxes as far as that's concerned. But anyway, so I can look at um, grid f uh, grid four, which is my grid um, beyond the crossing, and then compare that to grid five. And as you can see, the area behind is about 20 lux. The area um, in front of the crossing. Oops, wrong wrong grid. So grid five is about sixteen. Similarly, on the other side, um, you can see there the approach uh, is twenty lux, and the area beyond the crossing is nineteen. I, I suspect that might. Oh, I've got the grid in the wrong place. So I've now got the grid in the right place. So um, as you can see, um, I've now got that set up. So that's that's one way of doing it. Um, another way you could go through and do it would be um, to use um, look at the actual vertical illuminance on the crossing. This is something we used to do um, before um, before we started looking at positive contrast. Uh, and I'm going to put um, a vertical grid across the actual um, carpet itself. Look at the direction we're actually considering it. Um, is that the right way? No, it's not. It wants to be on the other side. And then I'm just going to go duplicate that and then put another one. So this is um, a similar methodology to what we use with uh, with zebra crossings, which I've covered in a, in a different video. But um, what I can now do is um, go take a look at that grid um, and look at the actual results, um, probably with a grid that's, say, 2 metres high. Um, probably way too many points there. Let's go with um, with 5 points. Yeah, five will do. So I got, I've gone to a half meter grid spacing, and I'll do the same with grid four. Let's do that with. And um, change the height to two meters. So. Again, um, looking at the vertical illuminance on the on the side of the crossing, um, that is um, so that's that's another way of doing it. Um, you obviously have to be careful with the colorings, so we're going to have different colored grids. So let's go with blue. Um, so on this grid here, I've got sort of 20 lux over here, and then I've got about 30 lux on my vertical illuminance here, and then on grid five. Um, if I just go bring that up as well, grid four even. Um, we can see the results on that there. So um, that's um, a couple of different ways we can look at vertical illuminance. If I'm really honest, um, I find the um, the methodology of um, of looking at the actual uh, illuminance levels. Um, on the actual carpet here, uh, more than adequate, and that that shows to me that the the lighting level behind the crossing is significantly higher. You you could potentially use a different um, contour value. I'm using um, I've got a 20 lux contour and eight and a four, so maybe we would want to use maybe a 30 lux contour. Um, 
perhaps 25. So you can see clearly there that the light level beyond the crossing is significantly higher than that on the approach and from a negative contrast perspective that should um, give you an adequate solution. Um, I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions please drop me an email um, to support at lightingreality.com or alternatively if you have any questions um, or you have any further topics you want covering, again, support at lightingreality.com. Or lastly, if you want to tweet me directly, you can um, send me a message at nicksmith1246 on Twitter. Thank you very much.